Hey folks, Jack Toh here, and I'm so, so privileged to have a once in a lifetime brilliant conversation with Eric Anderson, formerly known as Biofan, a huge, massive inspiration and content creator representing the old guard of Bioware 10, 12 years ago. Um, Eric, thank you so much for joining me for this fantastic just opportunity to just talk to you about Dragon Age. How are you doing? Oh, well, thank you so much for that intro. 10 to 12 years now makes me feel kind of old, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess it really has been that long. But thank you so much for that sweet introduction. I think I've said this to you before too, but I really thank you for kind of like carrying on that torch of covering development. And I watch everything you do and, and appreciate it because I did kind of the similar thing back in the day. But no, doing great you know you're in england i'm in california yes. so it's my morning and i'm caffeinating <laughs> so yeah how are you doing today I'm doing great, thank you. It's been a bit of a shitstorm in England with with riots in our hometown, but we won't talk about that. Mm. But it, it's been, besides that, all good. You know, it's it's a really positive uh, place in the community. I think, from a Dragon Age point of view, of um, past eight years of me doing this channel, it's been like, when are we going to get anything? And I know we're now like, where's the release date? But what we're hearing and what we're seeing on the Veil Guard to me is it looks yeah. promising. I want to see more, and I don't just yeah. want to hear Game and From articles and what the devs are saying. I need to see it to believe mm -hmm. it. What I'm saying, it sounds it sounds good. So for me, you know, right now, it's a positive space. Yeah, I agree. Like, I am actually delightfully surprised yeah. at how hopeful I feel about it now. Because I know for multiple years, I guess, because it's been, it'll be a full decade between Inquisition yeah. and Elgard. Like, I knew that there had been several versions that had been scrapped before that was public knowledge. Yeah. And so I was a little concerned because I was like, oh, like, this seems like, I mean, is there ever a typical development cycle? I don't think so. But it seems, you know, like, not exactly likely that this is going to be like a home run kind of development situation. Sure. Um, and I know, too, it came out about like, at one point, it was going to be live service oriented. Thank God that's Flip not back. happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, Can you imagine? <laughs> they came to their senses and they were like, hey, so the reason people played all the three previous games was because it was this genre. So maybe let's go back to that. <laughs> uh, and I know I'm glad it seems like now like EA put like game of the year sequel kind of budget behind it, it seems, because it yeah. looks fantastic from oh, what yeah. we've seen, from everything we've heard so far. It seems like it's really not only a continuation of what we love, but they're trying to make it even better. For sure. And I can even tell to you from news article pieces, they took a lot of feedback from Inquisition yeah. and, and made improvements like, they still want you to be able to explore, but you're not gonna be trekking through a desert for 20 minutes without encountering <laughs> anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or mounts. <laughs> or mounts or all that kind of stuff, yeah. but I know, like, before we really got a lot of information during the good, what, eight years of silence, yeah. shall we call it, yeah. um, <laughs> that I was going into this and a lot of the other, I guess you could call it old guard yeah, uh, yeah. folks that I'm still in touch with some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we kind of went into it thinking, like, okay, this might be the last Dragon Age games, so, like, sure. go into it not expecting anything to happen after it to kind of, you know, guard our feelings. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, though, like, it looks really good. So yeah. I am very, very excited for it. I'm still trying to figure out doing the math of, like, how many playthroughs I have to do to play every <laughs> faction and romance every character. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Do you know what you're going to do first? I have any inkling towards? I want to do, like, a super funny and like horny <laughs> pirate archer guy hell yeah it's a lot of fortune yeah. hell yeah yeah <laughs> and i think i'm still trying to decide like who the, one of the few pieces of criticism i'll give and this is like very minor because it also kind of pairs with one of the like oh i'm glad you did this kind of things is i'm glad they went back to making all of the romance options open to any any player Sure. Uh, I'm really glad about that. I understood in Inquisition having those characters' sexualities in some cases, not all, but in some yeah. cases, be like a part of their character. Like yeah. for Dorian, it really made sense for, sure. for the for sure. story. Um, but then other characters, like I mean, I don't know how you would write someone being genuinely heterosexual, but 
I'm too gay to understand that. <laughs> okay, um, but I know there were some characters that budget wise they wanted to have open to all genders, but yeah. they didn't have time to complete that. But yeah. um, between Davern and then Lucanus, I'm trying to decide. I mean, Emmerich is sweet, but yeah. I, I like a nice, like, hunky man, okay. you know? Fair, fair. Um, <laughs> trying to decide between those two. Having not met either of them yet, yeah, it's you true. know? Yeah, it's true. And the voice, personality yeah. is, like, it's you true. know, it's good 50% with <laughs> fictional characters and falling in love with them. I agree. Because um, I will, while, as I said, very gay, surprisingly, do you wonder who my favorite Dragon Age 2 romance was? Ooh, Meryl. Isabella. Hey! As it should be. <laughs> <laughs> love her. Oh, just, oh, love her. So, her character. I really hope that she concept art is true, though, and she's yeah. coming back. It was good. She, 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 she would be like a very significant Lords of Fortune For sure. kind of, you know, cornerstone character. Yeah. Uh, Pirate captain, captain her own ship of the Felicina yeah. Almada, whatever it's called. She could easily Speaking of that, if they do a fifth Dragon Age game, yeah. I've been saying this for years, they Same need thing. to have a pirate Dragon Age game where, like, you assemble a crew and you go around on a ship. Hell that yeah. would be so fun. Um, and it's not like they can't do that because they've done better. it with Mass Effect. Yeah. So it's like, just take those yeah. mechanics, you know, from a ship kind of thing, hub, whatever, yeah. and then you're going out. But it's just a physical ship, not a spaceship. And but that's yeah. you, like, how they... So, like, with Dragon Age Origins, we were just in Ferelden. Yeah. With Dragon Age 2, we were 99% just in one city, and then kind of a little bit of free marches otherwise. And then in Inquisition, we were like southern half of Thetis, because they were going around on foot or on mount. Yeah. And then that cutscene of them walking through that mountains, I was like, how has no one died? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> They don't look prepared for this. Um, I, uh, magic, I suppose. Yeah. Just magic. Uh, so let's do that. <laughs> with Veilguard, they're doing this like narratively very sneaky, smart thing yeah. of hop around through all the alluvians all over the place. Yes, yeah. Get around this massive geography. Yeah. So I feel like narratively, you know, a pirate ship or ship of some sort. I like, yeah. don't necessarily. I guess like they would have you decide are you going to be like a lawful sea captain or like a naughty pirate. <laughs> but uh, you could go around like the peripheral edges of everywhere pretty yeah. easily and like islands and stuff. Oh, and then sure. everybody really wants to know like where the Cunari originally came from across the sea. And yeah. like there could be all sorts of like, you know, discovery kind of things sure. that could be fun. I forget what the original thought was because I've gone on a, on this tangent, but oh, it was, it was oh, deciding who my boyfriend is. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> For your first playthrough. I mean, Davrin, Lucanus first. Is it like, hmm, maybe second? I feel like I'm leaning towards Lucanus just because, yeah. like, who doesn't love a bad boy? But I got to meet them first yeah. and figure out. The personality. Because, like, yeah. Davrin, I feel like, like just because we've maybe heard that one snippet of Davrin's voice. Yeah. And just knowing, like, kind of a little bit about their backgrounds on paper, I would say, like, Lucana seems more interesting. For sure. Oh, for sure. But again, I've not met them. Yeah, I've not yeah. seen like, what their vibe is. Yeah. And that's compared um, to like Lucanus, who has like Tavintonite stories and Dragon Age yeah. short stories, and Davrin mm -hmm. just has one line of dialogue, is a Grey mm -hmm. Warden, is an elf, and has a pet griffin. So like Lucanus yeah. already has his backstory sorted out for him kind of yeah. in some regard. And we know so, so that we, yeah, we know a lot lot more about Lucanus than we do Davrin, so it is really hard to go in and be like, hmm. It, it's hard until I start like you know, it is it's like dating in real person. That's like true. Yeah. you meet someone on an app and then it's different versus when you meet them in person. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta vibe it out. So yeah, you I did, you I did. vibe it out with all of them. <laughs> um, now really the question is which one of them is gonna betray us in the end? Yes. Or no yeah. I guess you could say like technically Morgan didn't like betray us, but who's gonna like flip the flip script? The yeah. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. Um and I have a theory. Hit me. Hit me. That <laughs> is very likely going to be wrong. But hear me oh. out. They know we're all going to be looking at these mages, right? Yeah. We're going to be looking at Nev. 
We're going to be looking at Ballara, I believe was confirmed as a mage. Yeah. We're going to be looking at, are any of them other mages? Ha um, the Emmerich, like mages? Emmerich's a mage Emmerich, as well. Yeah, right. But then yeah. Harding is now officially an apostate. <laughs> was what I was thinking is that would be the most like pull the rug out from under you because no one would suspect lovely always on your side like the most like paragon of paragon characters now she has just a touch of magic which we're all very curious about oh, sure. how that's going on um but I would be like how crazy would it be if it's Harding that's the one at the end that has like her own agenda yeah. And flips the script because no one would be suspecting it's that. It's true. <laughs> I remember back during like Inquisition's development and when they were releasing stuff and when we were covering it, and like Sol, no one was really excited about Solus because all the descriptions <laughs> we were getting were very simple. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. very like you know nonchalant. We're like, oh yeah, it's just like some elf <laughs> dude things out in the woods and like, yeah. like still got ruins and stuff and <laughs> yeah, just, like, yeah. Just, like, like Safed. Yeah. yeah, like he's, he's bald. He's, yeah. uh, no, he's not Dalish. No, he's not a city yeah. elf. He's just you know just like, out there, <laughs> and we're all like. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, who has yeah. the least spicy descriptions? Yeah, yeah. To, like, see, like, who are they trying to see us? Who are they trying yeah. to, like, you know, do? But you also have to think, too, like, who's mandatory in the party? Yeah. Because, like, Morgan, I think, you, I don't think you can get rid of her. No, I until, think she's like, fully, yeah. End. Fully yeah, and they've even said in the Veil Guard, like, you can piss them off, but they also, there's a, they, they, yes, you can get rid of people, and there is this element of death and consequence, but you also <laughs> need, you, ca like, you kind of need everybody in your party, so while you can piss them off, there is a way where they're going to still kind of end up in the main ending section anyway. Yeah. Like, with Anders, I think you can tell him, if you are a very bad person as a hawk, you can tell him to, like, go away. Yeah. And then he just pops up again near the end. Yeah. But Anders, too, is, like, a very early in-game character. And then Solus starts with you. Morgan almost starts with you. Yeah. If you go by the, like, starts with you ideology, then I would say, like, Nev has some potential. And I For think sure. that could be a big flip of the script, too, if she has her own agenda. Because she's a part of the... People that are trying to like turn to venture over, get rid of slavery, yeah. etc. She has an ulterior motive. That could be interesting. For sure. Oh, for sure. Um, the person I least suspect is going to be Bellara, simply oh, because yeah. if she had her own agenda, it would be too close to like Solus in terms of like yeah. elfy, magic y, yeah. fady stuff so i feel like Bellara is probably the safest yeah, yeah. Uh, watch her be the one that actually does it, no, it does it. but <laughs> well, the uh, thing about Bellara for me is it's all the triangle stuff and the veil jumpery stuff and i'm like the executors kind of have this underlying tie to them so far based on concept art and the books and i'm like the executors kind of we're all confused about yeah. the executor veil yeah. jumper yeah like what's going on connections yeah. i also wonder too if like some of the stuff they've just kind of been like oh we're just going to rename what this thing is also true yeah because if you look at I believe it was the epilogue of Trespasser, like Dorian and May found like the, I think it was Lucerne. The Lucerne, yeah, yeah. And I think that's now evolved into the, what's the name of the, the faction? Sh that the Nef Shadow Dragons, yeah. Shadow Dragons, I feel like that's what the Shadow Dragons yeah. are now. So they could easily be like, we just rebranded, yeah, you yeah. know? We changed that name. <laughs> that was our original name. Now we like, are something else. <laughs> yeah. Something else. One thing I really liked you about this game is how they've set up all the factions to be like even if it's something like obviously for example the mourn watch like oh, yeah. obviously this is going to be an order that was like founded around necromancy yeah but naturally within like an organic world like this there would be like rogues and warriors yeah. that would also somehow be around so narratively it's like yeah, there's probably fewer like great sword wielding war more sure. watch people than there are necromancers, but like yeah. they're there. You know, you might be unusual being a Kunari yeah. in the Varan, <laughs> whatever, or like the Kunari or a dwarven Antiven crow. Exactly. Well, but... I think that's a little more founded. Yeah, but like a Kunari Grey Warden would yeah. be would be unique. would be pretty unique. Yeah. I yeah. feel like. 
but they're they're rolling with it. So that's one of the things I, I love that. to I love that. And it's yeah. kind of having a gameplay kind of experience too, because it's like, well, if you're an Antivan Crow and you're a mage, you're going to kind of need to have some kind of melee uh, combat yeah. ability too, because it just makes sense. And I love that the combat now is orientated around kind of your faction in a little bit too, where you have that yeah. flexibility if you are having that chosen faction. It just makes sense. On, on the faction and combat note, I think what my second playthrough is going to be and this might basically confirm that my first playthrough is going to be Lucanus, but I was thinking <laughs> of doing a, um, I haven't decided between Elf or Human, um, a Warden Mage that's like a Fire Mage. Nice. Uh, because Darkspawn are going to be weak to Fire. They came yeah. out and confirmed that. I don't know if that was the if that was the case in previous games, but it seems like that might be more important this yeah. time around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, well, if I do a Fire Mage Warden, that would be like very, that would be like super Darkspawn Destroyer because they're yeah. going to have like, I'm sure like passives for dark spawn and stuff like that if you're a warden and so he would naturally probably romance davern i would think yeah um sure. yeah, yeah. but who knows if i fall <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing it's like let it happen like like in real life you know let it happen oh yeah like i'm all for nev i'm thinking morn watch warrior um rook yes. and i'm thinking nev Ooh. but then i'm like Balara at the same time, but I'm like hiding yeah. kind of long lost love. So cute. You gotta, you gotta meet the ladies. It's and true. Figure out <laughs> I also, we've gotten very little info about Tosh and yes. just a little bit about what Trick has like put out there. I feel like she's gonna be really fun. Yeah, oh, for so sure. For sure. I am curious to learn more about Tosh. The interesting thing is like in all the Dragon Age games, like I'll have like a number one romance. Like I'll have like, this is my yeah. boyfriend, but, <laughs> or, or like, this is my best friend slash like, if you remove like sexual attraction, I am deeply in love with Isabella. But yeah. with Mass Effect though, with the original trilogy, like I cannot play that game and not romance Caden. Like if right. he's there, right. I can't <laughs> not. Like that is my space bay. You right like that there. Canadian ham? <laughs> yeah. Like I like I can't. Like there are some other wonderful characters. I'll yeah. go watch the romances <laughs> on YouTube and stuff. But yeah. like if I'm physically there yeah. in a video game, physically there, yeah. you know, um, and he's also physically there. I'm yeah. like I can't. It's, I can't cheat on him. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't do that. Who was your first mm -hmm. Inquisition? Ooh, okay. So I am I am a deep hardcore founding order of the Colonites. Oh and, okay. Yeah. So yeah. like Colton was like my like longing, longing like we're talking before he was even like announced in the yeah. game. We were all like, well, what if he leaves Kirkwall and like they, could bring, they brought him back for the first, for the next game? Like, what if they carry him forward? Yeah. Like, he grew a lot yeah. over the course of it. And like, he was just so attractive. Uh, <laughs> and I will PSA for this going out into the public. You know, there's some controversy with his voice actor. Sure. I am keeping this conversation to the character in yeah. the fictional universe of the video game. Sure. So just you know, don't don't come for me about. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about a fictional character who happens yeah. to be voiced by someone that you know. Let's not get into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's strictly the fictional character. Yeah, my well, husband Colin. there. But then, but Solus is just so spicy. Yes, <laughs> it's less about me being like emotionally into him and more about just like the plot, the plot, like, the, the juicy, juicy drama. Yes, of the, like, yes. Of the, like, he touched my butt and told me he loved me and removed my Vaseline and then this. <laughs> it's spot on. It's true. It's like what? I was I was a little worried beforehand because I knew I knew we weren't going to be playing as the Inquisitor, but I knew like the Inquisitor like existed in the world, and so I was and like Solus is obviously around. So I was like, hey, like, why are we the ones going after Solus and not the protagonist that's like deeply invested in him? Sure. And I too was like, I don't want to like feel overshadowed by my previous protagonist. Yeah. But I think the way they did it of like trapping him into yeah. this yeah. is kind of a interesting narrative way to make it okay. For sure. You know, oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, 
And I agree with the whole like diff new game, new protagonist. You get a different lens of the yeah. world. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about the franchise too. The Inquisitor is going to be involved to some degree, which is good. But yeah, I, that was one of my initial concerns. But they've uh, they've yeah. alleviated that. So same, honestly, same. The biggest thing I wanted from this game is closure with Solas. I mm -hmm. I am a Solar villain. I am a Josephine Mansa predominantly, but I do. Uh, back... Josephine is like just. Disney Princess Have you vibes. Met Allegra Clark before? No, no, I'd love to. No. Have you? I that was like I did interviews with a bunch of different voice yeah. actors. Gotta say, like, that interview was one of the most like making a friend in a professional setting oh. kind of moments I had interviewing all the voice actors. Like she was because she was a fan of the series before and did lots of cosplay and stuff. And just like love that girl josephine was super super fun so she was she was your oh, girl yeah and, disney and princess she, vibes just beautiful yes. but then i love just back uh back sitting on the solo villain drama like i i, I am a solo villain but i kind of love watching the solo villains freak out and i'm like yeah i can dip my toes in it and i love it but at the same time mm -hmm. i get i get to play it safe for my nice happy fun disney princess romance over here <laughs> but i i the biggest thing that i wanted was closure for solas if you were his best yes. friend if you hated mm -hmm. him if you loved him and it's again what was just based on what janepa is saying and what the team is saying mm -hmm. that seemingly is the intention they're going with with this game yes, yes you will get that closure and mm -hmm. while initially it's like well how can we have that if the inquisitor is going to be a small role in this but i like the mm -hmm. fact that now we've got this dynamic where people are like actually mm -hmm. i want to romance solas's rook he's living rent free in my head i'm living rent free in his in his in his new fade hub i'm going to get mm -hmm. get used to this d divorce lifestyle he's got going on maybe there'll be some kind of spark i don't know but mm -hmm. um it, it, it sounds like a brilliant dynamic of how they're really shaking it up and that's what yeah. i'm excited to see really because that's just yeah. been the fundamental i thing. do hope there's this like kind of you know i'm probably i'm probably sure it's in there because like devs also romance solace the devs yeah. also oh, sure. been through a heartbreak <laughs> and i want an option of like you know if your inquisitor is still in love with him yeah. still wants to be with him but he just deserves a good old big slap just like right <laughs> out the gate no dialogue yet just bam yeah, yeah and then get into the like i'm not murdering you yeah. i want that nice like balance because yeah. like i'm sure you could go up to him slap him and then be like your life ends here yeah. but i want that like I, I need that like satisfaction of just like bam <laughs> um yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you in a, what did they make it 10 years from it 10 years okay. yeah yeah that's kind of appropriate because it has been a full <laughs> 10 years Literally. Uh, the immersion <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would like that option to like slap him, but still not kill him. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. A, a slap, but not too definitely of a slap. <laughs> not, not too. I, I remember one of my most watched videos on YouTube was actually slapping was Solace compilation. The Solace <laughs> slap video, and I added something funny, visual effects to it or something. Yeah, yeah. I added, I made it into like a remix or yeah. something. <laughs> Forget what I did. Um, <laughs> but that was one of my most watched videos. <laughs> People want to slap Solas Bioware. <laughs> are there um, are there many connections that you still have with staff at Bioware currently? Because I know t um, obviously ten years ago you were that deep in it. I think you were um, yeah shipped I out with Andromeda and folks, stuff. A lot of folks have moved on. Mm. I am connected on LinkedIn with a lot of them too. Yeah. I would say like if I really wanted to send one of them a message, I mean I've changed my like profile picture or my handle. I'm not sure if they would know. Some of them would maybe. Yeah. that met me in person yeah i don't know i i'm connected with a few of them still but i will the reason i guess kind of bigger picture the reason that i stopped doing videos yeah. um i did it mostly while i was in university for sure so i had time because as you know it takes for, sure. for i would say would you think would you agree with every minute of video time takes you an hour of work or so sure. or more sure. an yeah. hour or two sure. per minute yeah I, it was very time consuming, but very, very fun. I loved doing it. I developed a lot of like professional skills too doing it. Yeah. And I, I had so much fun like meeting other people in the community. But then when I graduated and got my degree, I like had to get an adult job and yeah. join corporate America. <laughs> and I didn't really have time to do that anymore. I too, like it didn't make much of any money. Yeah. I think my highest paying month I had was like $500, yeah. which sounds nice, but it, nobody's rent is $500. <laughs> it's true. So, it's true. Yeah. So it was nice like when I was in college, yeah. but now I don't. 
have bandwidth to do it. If I could split into five people, one yeah. of those five people would probably be doing it. Would I have to feed all, feed all five of me? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, no, I'm, in, I'm lightly in touch with some of them. One dev, I really hit it off with very well. Yeah. Uh, and we became good friends, uh, and she's no longer at Bioware. So we, right. we talk and we don't even talk right. about Bioware stuff anymore, but no, all the devs were really nice to me. And right. I think there was this kind of established trust of like, I will give criticism, but yeah. I'm not going to trash you. Yeah. My criticism is to like, make these games better. And they For knew sure. that's where I was coming from. For sure. And I got to like preview some of the games too before they came out. So like with Inquisition, I was studying abroad at the time. They actually had a London event to preview it. Oh, wow. Uh, so I got to go down to London and preview the game and like run around in the hinterlands. <laughs> and I remember I didn't get it in recording and I'm so mad, but there was this really cool moment where I was in the dragon fight in the hinterlands and I paused it at just the right moment that a fireball was like a foot from my inquisitor's face. And everybody behind me was watching, everybody goes, whoa! Cause it like paused at the perfect moment. I was so mad I didn't get that on recording. Uh... But, and cause I remember like I went in, I was like, okay, let me get like, just like some footage and stuff. Yeah. And then I want to like feel no pressure for like the second half of the day and just like go around and play. Then I also got to preview Andromeda. Yeah. And uh, uh, didn't you almost out. beat it? I remember you almost beat it, didn't you? I, <laughs> I remember you saying that in Andromeda. <laughs> I, so they only let us record, what was the first planet in Andromeda? Do you remember the name? Elios? The I, Elios? 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 Eos, right? Eos, 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 that's it, yeah. yeah. If it's wrong, please, nobody listening to this, hate me. I, just, <laughs> I remember they only would let us record Eos, and like, it was full two days, yeah. like full two days. Neck. And uh, I remember, you know, there's only so much time you can spend on EOS. Yeah. And then there's only so much time you want to spend. On EOS. <laughs> I was like, okay, I feel like yeah. I've recorded everything yeah. I could possibly need. Yeah. Cause the game was going to come out in what, like, I want to say a month or yeah. less. Yeah. So like thinking of how much time it's going to take me to put together videos and sure. everything I could put together a video on, I'm like, okay, like I have enough. So yeah. I want to like get a sense of the game. And obviously I couldn't talk about the rest of the game, but get like some general kind of, I could incorporate it. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, if I don't record, can I like play? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then it was, <sighs> it just went and played the game and had fun and yeah. wasn't like, oh, I need to do every single thing. I was like, let me just like chase the story yeah. and get like, get some plot. And um, I was thinking like, wow, this game's really good. Yeah. Like we're really getting started here. Like this, the later half of this game must just be like amazing. <laughs> and I was like, and they were like, okay, for your next mission, you're going to meet everybody up at like the meeting table console area on the <laughs> ship. Um, and you're going to go to Meridian. And I'm like, okay, this game's really about to take off. <laughs> um, and they're like, oh, don't go up there. I was like, oh, and they're like, yeah, don't do that. And I was like, why? And they're like, just don't do that. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, okay. Little did I know, I was basically at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was like getting to like the midpoint yeah. where things like turn, like yeah. the big plots switch yeah, up yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the, the Isabella is the one that stole the Tome of Cosley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't know that I basically was about, I could have actually completed <laughs> yeah, the story yeah, yeah. the time I had left that day. And granted, Andromeda is a whole other discussion. Yeah, I, sure. I just enjoyed that game. I am more optimistic for the next Mass Effect game. For sure. I think that development cycle, there was one person that I don't know a whole lot about them, but I know they were put in like a very senior role for Andromeda. Right. I don't know if they had worked on a Bioware game before, I forget. Right. And they had a lot of grand visions that weren't getting kind of executed on and things were taking up a lot of time. I don't know if that person was like, go because they weren't doing very well in leadership or they left or what have you. Right. But then they had a very limited amount of time to actually make an executable game after that senior person left. Oh, wow. So I... Also kind of marvel of what they were able to do in that short amount of time. Oh, for sure. That and I think it's somewhat known now, but like Dragon Age 2 was yeah. made in six months. Yeah. Six months. Not even a full year. Yeah. They were able to like that game gets no criticism. Yeah. That game gets nothing. Yeah. Like that they did that in six months months yeah. i'm amazed that game deserves more oh for sure like when it first came out we did have like criticisms about it compared to origins yeah 
but no one knew that they really made this game in half a year. Yeah, flipping heck. Like, the yeah. devs were telling me, we were like, we don't talk about what it was like for those six months. <laughs> Flip, yeah. <laughs> Insane. Like, yeah. And that was an e EA thing of, like, I forget what the specifics were, but, like, they needed some kind of title to come out hmm. a certain quarter, and it needed to be a type of game or something. There was some sort of, like, they basically pointed at Bioware, and they're like, what can you give us to meet this you know, corporate America business quarterly yeah. investory get money situation for sure. And I am still so sad that we never got that expansion. Yeah, uh, flipping exalted match. But, uh. but knowing that Varric would have died in it, <laughs> I no, I'm kind of glad they didn't. But the thing that I do, there oh, are no. a couple, there's like two or three things that we know from the expansion that I'm kind of sad we never got to see. First of all, they showed Meryl in that lovely gold armor. And yeah. she was bringing it to the runway with that yeah. lovely gold armor. <laughs> and I, I want, I, if she's in this game, yeah. I want to see that. She, there was that like, I think concept art or something that like Morgan was going to be in it. And there was a barn on fire yeah. or something. Like, what's going on? And then the architect was going to be in it. Yes. That was the big thing. Oh, that would be uh, good. My theory, and I think this is like semi confirmed, likely what have you, is oh, yeah. that the entire plot of that expansion was put into Inquisition as the Warden plot, but instead of Corypheus and whatever that one Tavinner guy's name was. Oh, Eremind of um, I feel like I've heard this before, but ages ago in like a video or something. Yeah, it was supposed <clears throat> to be the architect that was yeah. doing shenanigans. Yeah. I don't know if like the end plot or the end goal of it was the same of like all the Wardens are hearing the call yeah. or what, but I know the architect was there yeah. and it seems, and, Seems kind of like they moved that plot into Inquisition, maybe changed some things, but I think that was going to be what the expansion was. Also, too, something about Sebastian and revenge for what Anders yeah, did. Was yeah, interesting. Um, and marrying. Like I Sebastian think there was a marriage. There was a marriage aspect of it, too, I believe. I mean, I, I should hope so. Yeah. Hawk deserves happiness. I what agree. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see Hawk again. Mm. Um, if Hawk is in the fade, shame on you. Uh, <laughs> Hawk has had a very hard life. Okay. Hawk deserves. I mean, Hawk apparently is out in Wysop. We'll find out what's going on there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. hanging about. <laughs> no, Hawk deserves happiness. Yeah. I feel like at this point, the hero of Ferelden, um <laughs> has probably. I know it's it's. No one wants to hear this. <laughs> I think they probably have passed away now. Yeah. Like it's been long enough. Like, what's the average warden timeline? Like, it's not. Yeah, it's not it's good. Not, <laughs> it's not good. Because <laughs> um, I remember I did the math on this at one point when I was really nerding out, and I feel like it's like maybe 20 years of warden time, of warden time. before yeah. <laughs> people start really hearing the calling and like, it's been over. Yeah. It's been, more it's, than been it's been two decades now, yeah. Since it's Oregon. been two decades yeah. now. Granted, yeah. like, I kind of like how they left of like, looking for a cure yeah. we're maybe not gonna ever touch on that again so you yeah. can make your own yeah. conclusions yeah. in theory maybe they did find it but it wasn't something that could be replicated for sure um granted alistair's biological mother mm -hmm. and the architect yeah. and i've reread that section of that book so many times <laughs> and i'm like i still don't understand yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody, somebody, walk me through <laughs> the math on this magic, the science on this non-science. Yeah. Um, so clearly, it's possible. I just don't understand. Yeah. So I, I don't think we'll ever see or hear from them again. And no. one of my only that brings me to one of my only potential concerns for this game. Oh, yeah. Hit me. Just, and this might not even really matter, but from the news we've been getting, I am maybe concerned that our d choices in Origins and Dragon Age 2 might not come up in this game. Okay. From what we've heard about, like, mm. that character yeah. creator section that's basically replacing Dragon Age Keep. Yeah. Which I think is very smart, by the way, it is. doing yeah. it that way. Yeah. For, like, the casual gamer that's like, you want me to go to a website to do what for a game if not what? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's true. So I think that does make it a little easier. And I'm sure that's optional too of like, they're going to have a default, they're going to yeah. have like a option B and then they're going to have like the custom. So I'm a little concerned that in there, there's not going to be a lot of like Origins decisions or Dragon Age 2 decisions. Yeah. All going to be like, what'd you do in Inquisition? Yeah. I could very easily be wrong. Um, but I'm like, you don't care that Alistair is king of Ferelden? <laughs> <laughs> Alistair was my uh, Origins boyfriend. As he should be. I was, I was what, like, I was a kid when I first played Origins, so I was like, this handsome man says, 
he loves me. <laughs> and then I go back and play it as an adult. And it's kind of like when you go back and reread Twilight as an adult. Like, this oh. guy's really, like, kind of one note. Like, I need a little more, like, more substance yeah. dim dimension in here. Still love him, though. Like, yeah, Alistair yeah. holds a place in my heart. Is he still and alive for you in your in your playthroughs? Oh, every time. Yeah, well, yeah. If it's between Hawk and Alistair yeah, and the Fae. So, yeah. so usually, I have a bunch of, I have so many different playthroughs. Usually he's King of Ferelden. Right. So he's, he's so he's never having to interact with Hawk yeah. or going to the Fade. Yeah. Um. So like nine times out of 10, Stroud is the one that's in the Fade. Good. And what I would love for Stroud is some kind of like returning from the Fade or doing something in the Fade redemption. Like he's got some yeah. sort of weird magical, he's going to have some interesting plot that apparently isn't in the main game, but like... Mm. I think it'd be super funny if, like, if it's Hawk or Alistair, yeah. they don't have some super cool moment. But if specifically it's Stroud, he gets yeah. this epic moment because yeah. I'm sure they have stats on this. But I feel like 90% <laughs> of the sacrifices were always Stroud. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I would love for Stroud to really have his moment. <laughs> and But if it's between Hawk or Alistair... Yeah. In this case, because if it's Alistair, then I'm not Queen of Ferelden. Yeah. So I let Alistair go into the Fade. Because yeah. Alistair's also a Warden. So technically, like, his lifespan's limited. Yeah. Versus Hawk is not it's... a Warden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hawk has gone through enough, as we said. So, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. So while I don't like making Alistair stay in the Fade, like, yeah. if you think about it logistically, like, mm. Alistair's got, what, like, maybe five, ten years left of living. For sure. Hawk's got, like, regular lifespan yeah. years left of living. So, like, if you think about it... From that point of view, yeah. From that point of view, as we talk about fictional people that don't actually exist, yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. gives Alistair another heroic way to end, you know. Yes, another exactly. one. <laughs> like, either either he was going to hear the calling and go down on the deep roads yeah. anyway, or he can, you know, save the whole Warden Order of the South. Flip it yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'm very curious how that, like, Warden Civil War is going to yes. come into play. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm like, okay, what's the conflict? Because I think it's going to tie into Awakening of, like, the Cognizant Dark Spawn. Yeah. And, like, potentially making them allies yeah. and things like that. And that's going to be really interesting now that potential spoiler warning because it was put out there we we're all like i'm surprised game informer was allowed to publish this <laughs> uh, about like the like the old gods being the elven gods like yeah. we all kind of thought that we, was gonna yeah, be it for but sure. in a way that we're all still shook to find out that is indeed the truth yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so i'm very cu curious like how all the things connect. are gonna connect yeah the blood the lyrium all of the it dark spawn the corruption the how does all of this so it's interesting that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can look this up on the Wikipedia pretty quickly, but I think it was like there was only going to be two, was it two or three dragons left for Blights to happen with? Two, I believe, two. Two, and then yeah. we have two elven gods yeah. that are last left. So I feel like in that little ceremony thing, again, we don't know how the souls are moving around yeah. and how yeah. the dragons work and whatnot, but math-wise, all the other elven gods, in theory, the souls the dragons, yeah. the blights happened. So yeah. it'd be two left. And those are the two they're getting unleashed. Yeah. So in theory, after this game, there couldn't be another blight. Is what yeah. It sounds. yeah. Yeah. Or the blight is these two elven gods, non archdemon dragon. Yeah. And then if we kill them, do they operate like an archdemon? Like, it's true. Why is it a great warden and the archdemon and the souls moving around? And yeah. then we have a lot of questions. It's true. Yeah. Confirming that opened up a whole can of worms. Yeah, um, it's true. It's true. And, and then why? And then Lyrium is alive. What is a titan? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, untainted old gods as well. Like, so they're released. They're untainted. Is this their true form? No, I think it's confirmed that the that the elven gods are blighted. But then it's like they're not blighted by a dark spawn. How were they blighted? Was there just some dragon hang out in the deep roads, <laughs> well, yeah. sleeping, yeah. and then the elven god was like, you know what? Like, <laughs> I'm so into you. Like, how, like, how were all the elven gods in the same like prison space that Solus yeah. them at? It yeah. just kind of crept out one by one, popped into a dragon, or like. How or where, like, or did Solus put all of them into dragons 
and yeah. like put some kind of sleep spell on them yeah and threw them in the deep roads in some like hard to get to nook and cranny for sure but these two got special prison yeah. on how I, it's true it's I, true one of my favorite mm. interview moments was when i interviewed trick weeks and yeah, they, yeah. uh i asked them about i was like okay so i don't know if you know this but on the map of Thetis, right, there's this dot into Venter. He's like, I know where this is going. <laughs> they know where this is going. So there's this dot into Venter, and it's a Solus next to it. Is is this like some sort of like Thetis GPS tracking system? Or like, what's going on there? And they were like, you know, words have origins, and they come from different cultures and languages, and they have meanings. And I was like, you're giving me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is the most sus place in all of Thetis. Oh, for sure. It has to be. It literally is. Yeah. It's dead so last. Like, what? And even the fact that when the Inquisitor put that knife through the map, it was right near the word Solas. It's like, hmm. I'm like, is Solas going to be in Solas? <laughs> or like... <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that on the nose, no, but I'm very no. curious as to like, I mean, they can't have us go to Northern Thetis and not go there. I'm just- There has to be. I'm just saying. And also too with like, I loved about how the Trespasser DLC, especially when you go to that like Elven Ruin part of it, you're like, even the Inquisitor says like, I don't think we're anywhere like in Southern Thetis anymore. Yeah. I don't know where this is. So I am, I'm curious like everywhere we're going to go. I also wonder if we're going to get to see Parvalin. I could also so see... Good. Also Haran. I could also see there being like Parvalin DLC, but yeah, I yeah. feel like the Kunari conflict is a major plot line too, yeah, potentially. Yeah. There's so much happening. Off true. And wise. Going back to the Elven God stuff, the thing about the Blight yeah. Smart stuff is it still <laughs> all connects to Mafal as well. And that's the thing. She's right at the center of it with Speaking the Calling, with Plurton the Old God Souls. <laughs> Is she inside of Solus now? And then Literally. who was the who was the god that was the Dragon Age Origins Blight Dragon? Uthemiel the fifth. Uthemiel. Which elven god is that? God of Vanity. Uh, so Uthemiel is Vanity. Because so. I don't think they've had them all like Line up. correlated, confirmed. Yeah. They've not like lined mm. them up. But I'm curious which elven god that soul is. And then like. That yeah. was a part of Kieran, which there should always be a Kieran. Yeah. I know the devs are like, yeah. the devs kind of feel weird about technically you could not have a Kieran, but I want to say like 90% of playthroughs have a Kieran. Yeah. And so like, I am a little kind of like, oh, like it would have been cool if Kieran still had the Elven. Yeah. Uh, stolen him, but I'm curious like what that means. What's going on with that? And and, and with yeah, that, and with Solas that. having that as well. Now does Solas have like yeah. three to he has Mithal and then whatever whatever god yeah Athemiel whatever god was. was in that dragon i would like a nice like clear cut like this dragon was this yeah. elven god Me too. someone's <laughs> gonna put that together at some point i don't yeah. trust the game's actually gonna spell it out first that way yeah. but someone's gonna figure it out for sure curious to like what happens when there's no more lights like do the wardens get cured when all source of corruption is taken care of yeah. or see so, like why is it that warden blood makes dark spawn like cognizant and then also what even are dark spawn yeah now that we're true. into yeah. the source of the blight is these elven gods like what even is a dark spawn yeah. what i really want to see again that we didn't get to see in dragon age 2 and we didn't get to see in inquisition is a brood mother like bring back the yes. brood mother yeah i mean gilinan though the Gil brood mother yeah have you, have you read to in tonight's much i did it's been years yeah um was there one in that chapter that was about all the nasty, crazy... Yeah, well, they were, it, it, yeah. It, it kind of paints a picture that Gilanan is just like a big, massive yeah. broodmother of just creating monstrous darkspawn creatures with like seven heads or claws or yeah. a herlock with like a genlock's tail. And it just mm -hmm. gets the, the impression that like we should see like just big, twisted, disgusting broodmothers or the idea that Gilanan yeah. is just this mother of disgusting darkspawn. While we're talking about creatures that we want to see, I know they wanted to put a desire demon into Inquisition, Did but they? it didn't get. Uh... Are we going to get one for this game? I'm curious. And also too, they made them look I think it's an interesting concept. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I have to actually play the game, but how they yeah. made all the demons look like pieces of the nervous system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm curious how that would affect 
because the whole desire demon shtick is to be like a succubus or incubus. For sure. So I'm curious if maybe they're going to exclude desire demon just moving forward now with this design choice. Yeah. But I mean, you can make anything sexy if you try hard <laughs> enough. So a sexy nervous system. Um, <laughs> what would that look like? <laughs> I don't know. It, and I mean, I could see like, an, like maybe you have like the nervous system styles like wrap around body, yeah. like the body of the desire demon and i know too with inquisition they wanted to have male and female desire demons which i yeah. think is really cool yeah. i think how a desire demon should operate i don't know how you would implement this in the game but have it to where they can like shape shift that's a good idea the gender expression yeah. biologically or sex expression i should say to be more correct um but have it to where like if you're like mm, no, I'm not into you. Then maybe they flip yeah. into the other sex. Like you know how in Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate three, three, yes, with yeah. um, the, the what's his name? Uh, Raphael, Raphael's come with the with the yeah. succubus incubus demon that's in yeah. the bed chamber. Like it's like, oh, you're not into this. Are yeah. You into this? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that's how a desire demon like would operate. Yeah. And so that would be really interesting yeah. to see because the desire demon was causing all kinds of shenanigans <laughs> and for yeah, and that would be fun to see. Um, Speaking of sexy though, like 10 yeah. years on, is the was mm -hmm. the Dragon Age fandom as horny as it is now back when you were creating content? I would say technically, yes. <laughs> but I think what's different now is that we don't have as many pre-confirmed returning characters. Right. So horniness, yes, but pining is different because sure. with Inquisition, we had like people returning from previous games yeah. confirmed lit earlier on. So I would say horny, yes, but then like we don't have someone that like was in a previous game that we're going to get to romance now. Like the Colin situation was a yeah. whole big, oh, for sure. like there was years of he could fit into the game this way. Yeah. Um, And then I think the first... I forget this there was there's two moments that I think where like the first big like he's in the game simming confirmation was there was that one survey that got leaked that had it was kind of comedic concept art because it was like you could tell like his armor and his like outfit was drawn, but then they literally just kind of cut the head off of him in Dragon Age 2 and put it on top of that. And then there was also concept art, I think, at the war table that we weren't sure if it was him. But it looked a lot like him. I forget which one came first, but that just set us off. Oh, yeah? We were just like, "Oh my God, it's happening!" <laughs> um, <laughs> and the the colonite yearning was real, and we got everything we wanted. And I'm really grateful about that, <laughs> except that I do know that originally he was supposed to be bisexual oh. or open to both player yeah. sexes. They didn't have the time or budget or something, and that I will never forgive them for. No, but no. So that I missed out on. Granted, yeah. like I had a lovely time with it. My yeah. female mage inquisitor is helping with the Templar rehab program in Ferelden. <laughs> yeah. And that's a nice little lovely ending. I do know that they're, again, without getting into that can of worms about his voice actor, yeah. I do know that they intend to never bring that character back. For sure. So his conclusion is done. Yeah, and I think they gave him a very nice ending oh, oh, for, for sure. his character, so that that's done in there. But I would say, you know, there's people out here who want to have sex with a skeleton, so you tell oh. me how horny that is. You're talking to somebody who wants to have sex with that skeleton. <laughs> I think it's funny that the devs were like, not that skeleton, <laughs> but like. So this implies there's other skeletons that are just really poking fun at us. Like, it's true. It's true. I mean, we were horny like, over a tree. Are, like, what logistically, what kind of situation would we be in with a skeleton <laughs> for sexy stuff? <laughs> and the things that this franchise makes us think about. Um, like, <laughs> what sort of situation would we be in where we would be, like, thinking about flirting that. with a skeleton and... <laughs> I need to see it to believe it at this point. <laughs> In terms of the old guard of Bioware, who do you keep on contact yeah. with these days? I talked to you, Ash a, a little bit here and there, Lady Insanity, just kind of in passing. Gosh, what was her old handle? My friend Emma has gone into voice acting. Ability Drain. Ability Drain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she dropped that handle ages ago, so I yeah. forget the yeah, yeah, like yeah. stage names. For sure. um, Ability Drain and I occasionally chat. Seeker Cat and I. Seeker Cat, oh, I think, so. left Twitter. Right. Uh, so I haven't talked to her in a minute because of that. 
haven't talked to the rest of the folks. Is Gamer MD83, is she still doing she's stuff been, or did she kind of retire from? She's been in and out of it. And I did see that she streamed for the gameplay um, reveal, but I haven't. Okay, so she does like reactions. She's still, and she's stuff. still okay. doing some stuff for sure. No, I think she's in a similar situ situation as me. It's just like life's happening and oh, don't sure. have time to do videos, but like want to do reactions and things. Yeah, still try and be in it. See how she feels about it. Also, she was just like, I got to meet her. Oh, yeah. The most like positive energy person. Ah. I got to see her at the Andromeda before the release get to play it event thing yeah, in yeah. California. And she just has the most positive yeah. energy. Love that girl. And I remember too, like Dragon Age is my like big Bioware franchise that I love. I love Mass Effect too, but Dragon Age yeah. was like what got me in. For yeah. her, it was Mass Effect. So yeah. it was a really yeah. big deal for her to get to play Andromeda. I think that's it. I kind of, you know, like I am still on Twitter yeah. to like keep up with everything, but I, you know, don't have the bandwidth to like fully be involved like For I sure. used to. Yeah. So not as much just because of life, but not yeah. For sure. Not on purpose or anything. Yeah. No, it's just it's just life, isn't it? I mean, it is such a massive sacrifice because I do this full time as well. Sorry. Yeah. I do a full time job as well as part time YouTube. Yeah. And like there are sacrifices I, I make just because of just because of the lifestyle. It is a flipping yeah. it's a hard balance, you know, like you have yeah. to sacrifice and something if you to, do it. I was occasionally making a case with some of the devs. I was like, so like some of these news organizations get some info like early so they can put it together and yeah. have like an article published before yeah. like you put the trailer out. <laughs> yeah. Cause like these reporters on some things, not all, sometimes they do have to do it on the fly when stuff comes out, but yeah. sometimes reporters are given stuff early oh, for sure. so they can put together work for that sure. then comes out in tandem with some kind of reveal or launch or something like for in sure. seven day for Andromeda was <laughs> I 48 hours just disappeared from my life. Yeah. Um, Bloody hell. Yeah. And I was like, could you maybe like with a select few of us, like give us some stuff early, have us sign whatever you want just cause like, when certain stuff comes out, it's like, okay, I have to drop everything now yeah. and like put in like a day or two full of work. And For then sure. by the time this comes out, I don't like drop everything and put this out immediately. It's not going to yeah. be as relevant like a week later. Yeah. So I have to like drop everything, put this out within 24 to 48 hours yeah. for it to get more attention. If I had like access to stuff early. Yeah. I remember one time there was an Inquisition trailer that accidentally got published early <laughs> on the EA Spain page <laughs> of YouTube. Best believe I downloaded that video. The like words that popped up were in yeah. Spanish. So yeah. I didn't get to like dissect those as much. But like I got to go through and fully analyze that trailer before the US one came out. Oh wow. That that evening. There were all sorts of Spanish Inquisition jokes. Um, was that the Trespasser DLC trailer or something like that? I've definitely seen the video. I think it that's was. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think you're it, yeah, right. Yeah. Actually, so I got to fully put together that like <laughs> trailer analysis and stuff way ahead of schedule. So I could put my trailer analysis out like real fast yeah. on that one because I had a good twelve hour yeah. heads yeah. up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I wish they would have given us some stuff early, just because there were a lot of sacrifices that I had to make to get things out quickly with no like forewarning. And to the new cycle in on Andromeda was very silent until that in seven day. Yeah. And yeah. it was so much that was all bombarded on that one day. Yeah. That not only was I having trouble keeping up, but the fans were kind of like, there's so much coming out that I'm having trouble like finding everything yeah. and like knowing everything. Like it was a little bit too much all on one day. For sure. For everyone. So I remember, I think the video I put together for that one day of news was over like an hour. It was <laughs> so much that I was like, y'all couldn't have just like made it like in seven week yeah. instead of <laughs> just like, there. Or, or like, like release like, the like, stuff before. Have, like, you couldn't have just like spread this out a little bit more. Yeah, I bet yeah. they'd taken that feedback. It was just, it was too much for one day. Like if it were, because it was all like different articles in different places having different information. Yeah. So it wasn't just like there was mo like different yeah. trailers and stuff. It was like there's these different interviews, different yeah. articles, different yeah. things that all have different pieces of information. So you have to go to all of them to then build them. So many different <sighs> sources for so many different things. It was yeah. the I, the, like, 
again, loved putting together videos, but that was my least favorite Flipping thing that I had to do was yeah. in seven day for Andromeda because it was like, it took me a full 48 hours yeah. of work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like got on my laptop, eventually maybe slept, woke up, got back on my laptop. Like yeah. I, I, forget, I don't know if I ate food. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, there's a lot of sacrifices that are made. So again, sure. very grateful that you are carrying on the touch and doing a fantastic job of doing so. Thank you. Uh, I watch all your videos because I'm like, okay, I like keep an eye on some yeah. of the stuff, but he's gonna catch like everything. <laughs> um, and she like, there's new developers that because I'm not plugged in anymore. Yeah, like, they hire mm -hmm. people at Bioware that I'm like, I don't know who this person is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know to follow them. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you catch all the things and i am very grateful for that you do a great job you're very oh, thank thorough you. thank you and it keeps me updated on everything that's going yeah. on and i know too like with this development cycle like it's been a full decade um <laughs> i think after five years i was like i don't care how long it takes just make it good like if you're gonna yeah, take this sure. long like just, we've yeah. all it's been we've, it's, it's been this long if it were gonna be another five years but the game was fantastic like sure like i've waited yeah. this long we want it just to be good anymore. yeah it's true it's true yeah just yeah. be just be good and i think that's kind of what ea's stance on it now is just make it good yeah. just make it good it's been long enough because i don't know enough about you know like corporate investory lens of gaming but i think i know just enough to see how they could be like they don't necessarily value one specific RPG, or at least from EA, because they get a lot of money from their sports games. Yeah. Um, so I think they look at Bioware games as like the game of the year winner potential. Yeah. And they care about games of the year because people will be like, I've never played Dragon Age, but this yeah. one game of the year, so I'm going to give it a try. I think yeah. a lot of gamers will be like, I've never played this franchise or this genre, yeah. but this one game of the year, so I'm obviously going to try it. Yeah, for sure. So I know that they look at that because devs get bonuses if something wins game of the year oh, like right. it, it's a big big thing i think they looked at this as like okay the previous game was game of the year yeah so we need to try and so get this that. is going to be a front runner yeah out the gate just based on inquisition so i yeah. think they were like okay this needs to be good so it can actually win oh for sure and i'm very glad they didn't release the same year as boulder's gate literally that would have been, been i <sighs> bet you they specifically were like, nope. it can't be this year. <laughs> yeah. So maybe yeah. that's part of why this game is going to be so good is because they I agree. gave them an extra year to be like, it can't Polish be on it. the same platter <laughs> yeah. as, as Boulder's Gate 3. That's um, true. It's true. But no, I'm very optimistic. I'm excited for yeah, yeah. it. And I remember too when that first non-in-game trailer came out, I wonder how much say Bioware had in that because... For 24 hours, we were yeah. all like, yeah. <laughs> and like, I remember the Xbox trailers for Inquisition, and those were a very different style. But having that be the first actual, like, significantly revealing yeah. thing to come out, I think was a very poor marketing move. Yeah. Granted, they fully recovered from it, but for a full 24 hours, everybody on the internet was like, what's going on? <laughs> This looks like like Fortnite yeah. or just like, and then the actual game, like all the devs were like, just wait for tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait yeah. for the gameplay, yeah. and we're like, I mean, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, and then everybody collectively just let out this like sigh of relief. It's true. And we were like, oh. Literally, um, literally, it's yeah. like oh, it actually looks good. The gameplay looks decent. The combat, the, how they're changing. So I bet that. you it was yeah. EA that or. Yeah. some sort of corporate america partnership with xbox or something that that got put out first but i'm yeah. like it should have been the yeah. reverse it, i agree it, i agree some a mark marketing mishap there but yeah. Yeah. again fully recovered i think everyone's yeah. wise i i don't think there's anyone that saw that first trailer that hasn't seen the gameplay yeah, yeah. so yeah um speaking of yeah, that, that i just want to i just want to say thank you again for yeah. the the yeah. the the, me you handing the torch to me because literally you were the yeah. biggest inspiration for me back in the day Aww. like that, that's why like i even had the same artist as you louise for our... oh, louise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aww. because i was he's like nice. isn't he just <laughs> but i was like you know a big big inspiration of biofan i know ability drain also had the same artist and i was like i kind of see my i want to you know like um 
manifest what you want to be, whatever, or dress for the job that you want, or whatever. But yeah. I was like, I really just want to be a part of that fandom. I really want to kind of facilitate that same role with my own kind of unique quirks. But you were the biggest inspiration for me in that fandom 10 years, 12 years ago, watching your content. Aww. So the fact that you now re reverse effect watch my content, it is massively appreciated. Yeah, so really... it's a full circle moment. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah, really no, I, I, I love Dragon Age so much because, like, I start, like, I think you asked me to, like, before we, maybe before we started recording, but like what it means, the what Dragon Age yeah. means to me, and like when I first played Origins, I was a little gay kid growing up in the South. Yeah, it was one of the first games I could play where like you could play like when I was a kid, I played most games as like a female character. Yeah, and then Dragon Age and Bioware games were one of the first times I could play as myself, and then romance another male character. Yeah, and to me that was groundbreaking at the oh, time for sure. For sure. so first of all you started that with me being able to have representation of myself in a video game yeah uh and then to part of why i love isabella is that you know growing up again in texas like she was like yeah i have a sexuality it's a part of my person and yeah. that's something that isn't like you can poke fun at it and have a good time with it but it's like something that isn't shameful for sure um so isabella helped me i think through a lot of the whole like you have a sexuality no matter what it is yeah kind of part of growing up too i should also probably say that you know i was not the age that these games were rated for disclaimer. <laughs> um, shout out to my mom and dad for not knowing better. Um, <laughs> and the games mean a lot to me that way because they helped me through a lot of my own like development growing up and helped me to have representation in a number of ways sure. that I had never had before in video games. Like I'll still play as female characters here and there for funsies, yeah. but like it's yeah. nice to be able to kind of emulate yourself in a video Absolutely. game. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Bioware was the first time that I was able to really do that. For sure. So that's that's one of the biggest pieces for me on like why sure. the franchise mattered so much. I don't have many friends in my life that like play video games or like nerd yeah. out on Bioware anymore. Yeah, so yeah. it's nice to like Absolutely. Be, no, see that again. Yeah. That's the biggest thing with Dragon Age means to me is I've grown up, yes, I've had friends who like Dragon Age, but nobody really geek out about and like properly get into it as I have more yeah. towards later living like that. But that's why I've spot like created such a big community in this game and, and just talked about it so much because growing up nobody else really cared about it it's like oh yeah. do you know dragon age no i don't know dragon age is it like uh, age of empires is it like da, da, da? i'm like no it's a really significant brilliant rpg full of characters that you can romance and even at work now i just uh, unashamedly am myself and i'm like i'm like to kieran oh kieran i bet you'd love the iron bull i could definitely see you romance the iron bull don't you yeah and they're like what are you talking about why do you play games where you I get to romance people i'm like what do you mean <laughs> I think if I, if like, I physically existed yeah. in Beta and like was physically the Inquisitor, I probably would have ended up with Iron Ball. <laughs> I think is probably what would have ended up happening. <laughs> Honestly, even more shocking than Solus yeah. was my first Trespasser playthrough was with my Solus Mansing Inquis Inquisitor, obviously, because yeah. I was like, forget Colin, yeah. like, I need to know what's going on. Oh, for sure. Like, Lot, lot of priority here. Yeah. And, um, and that Inquisitor, when she was choosing between like an alliance with the Cunari or like saving these five ragtag, lovely yeah. mercenaries, was like an alliance with like a whole entire civilization should probably like help us, right? Yeah, yeah, like that would yeah. be a pretty big alliance <laughs> to get. So I let the chargers die. Yeah. I was like, mm, well, I mean, like it's not great, but it's also too, it's like five yeah. people that I don't think are like, are, they're, they're fun, but they're maybe not crucial versus like thousands of Kunari yeah. to like help me in this goal. And then <laughs> I saw the I got the consequences for my action. <laughs> and I when Iron Bull betrayed me, I yeah. was I was so shook. I I yelled at the TV. I like this was more earth shattering for me than the uh, soulless. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I it was so un I had no idea this was gonna happen. I was so shocked. I was like, no, 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 and then he's he's dead. And yeah. I'm like, I just upgraded 
all over your equipment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, with like dragon materials. <laughs> and I was just so shocked. Yeah. <laughs> so, so shocked. Damn it. Weeks. <laughs> The heartbreak. That was the most shocking moment for me, maybe in the entire franchise, was when oh, Rival yeah, yeah. betrayed me. And so then in every like Inquisition playthrough, I <laughs> obviously have to save the Chargers. What I'm also really interested in is, and I think they showed this in like early concept art, is Cal Shirok going to come into please, play? Please, please. Yeah. Oh, they've teased it, like, it as well, like in in, in, in codices of like the, the, the dwarves there, stenching, uh, reeking like a great warden. Just little drips little, of, yeah. little drips of something that I wonder, because I have like, I want to know more about the Titans too. Same, same. I'm curious about it. And like, what's going on with what was the name of that dwarf in the DLC? Valter. 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 Like, yeah. what's going on? With what Valta? the hell? Is yeah. Valter connected to Harding. Is like that how? What's going on? For sure. Like, for sure. What is the situ Is the Elven God of it all giving like all the dwarves like yeah. Valta uh, situation powers? Like, what's uh, is the? Are the Titans? We are, we know they're connected to dwarves somehow. For like. Sure. Is that connection like tingling or something now with the yeah. Elven God release or like something? It's all this. It's yeah, it's beautifully true. interconnected. Yeah, like yeah. web of stuff that we're gonna find out. It's um, true. And I like, like the, how does that relate to Harding? Did she does she already have her powers when we play the game straight away? Does she get them at the mid? Like, like how has that happened for her as well? I wonder if it was a After plot point first or was later added in because it seems like with the only being able to bring three com two companions with you yeah it seems like they've maybe blurred not all but some of the lines on classes for the for sure. companions oh, for sure. like Lara is a mage yeah. but she also has this magic bow thing yeah, yeah. and then uh, Tash dual wields but it's a warrior which I know was in yeah, Origins but now it's like you can't dual wield as a warrior you can only dual wield as a rogue is unique and yeah. then like Lucanus has some sort of demon weird thing going on. <laughs> demon weird thing going on that we don't know about, and because I was like, okay, who are the warriors? Because like yeah, I see yeah. thoughts, but like who is the other like warrior yeah. that we can bring with us? And I think it's not going to be as like class locked as previously because yeah, sure. like it used to be before that like you need to bring like one of each for sure to really have a balanced party because if you send all mages out there yeah. like you're gonna get wiped out it used to be that you needed to have one of each but now i think like it's no longer mandatory and they blurred those class lines for the companions yeah which is an interesting choice but then rook I'm also wondering if they're blurring those lines as well. Just a little bit about the abilities, and some yeah. of them seem kind of like there's a touch of magic in there. Like even the rogue doing that like attack yeah. that looked like it was magical. It's like, a what's going or on something. there? Something. It could yeah. also be explained of like whatever happened with the ritual. There's something yeah. to do with blood. We didn't see the For full sure. ritual thing. I strongly suspect that that scene they showed us yeah. was like 10% of the actual scene. Oh, for and sure. They Cut a lot of stuff out because yeah. that's how trailers work everybody oh it's true uh, do you think Varric's not... dead do you think Varric is gone gone i think they would save Varric's death for the end of the game right. instead of the beginning of the game because yeah. they want new players to fall in love with him too and a death that's that important needs to have Need, that death needs to happen at a, like a culmination point i, I can see that even being like halfway through the game yeah. as like your tone flip moment but that needs to be built up to you. And for new players that like don't know anything about any of this are gonna obviously fall in love with Varric very quickly. <laughs> that needs to build. I do, from a fiction standpoint, like once a character has finished their growth and has kind of contributed everything they can to the story and there's not really any other way they're gonna advance plot further, yeah. then like it does, from a plot standpoint, makes sense for them to have a death because there's they they've they finished their story. They're not gonna contribute any other way further. Like I guess Varric's no longer Viscount in Kirkwall. Yeah, and it's kind of and like 
he's helping go from Inquisition time to like hunting down Solus, and that's kind of been his big mission of the last decade. Yeah. So he's kind of helping us transition from, I mean, he helped us transition from Dragon Age 2 to Inquisition to now Veilguard, and like, guy's gotta be tired. <laughs> he's, been, he's been doing so much work. He doesn't get enough credit. He was there for the Canary invasion of Kirkwall. Yeah. He was there for the beginning of the Mage Templar War. He gets dragged in and interrogated by a fledgling Inquisition, and then is like, you know what? Fine, I'll help you because there's a fucking hole in the sky. <laughs> um, and then now he then he goes about the whole Corypheia situation. And then now this elven dude is behind all of it. And now I got to fix this. Like he is the kind of like, like sub protagonist to the entire series. And yeah. Go, Dude's tired. Okay. <laughs> he to, and like in a medieval setting, like what is a life expectancy anyway? It's like, true. It's true. People used to die at 30, which yeah. is wild to think about. Cause like disease and infection and nutrition oh, yeah. and dysentery and whatnot. <laughs> but I could see it being very likely that he dies in this game, but it ha but I don't think it's going to be in the beginning. It's the payoff. Make. You need that payoff yeah, of gotta, it being... It's got to really, it's got to really hurt. It's got to really... It's true, yeah. It, it can't like, just be at the start. It needs to be right in the middle, in the midst of it's it. It's got to build up to it. Warden Solace oh. going up to end the genophage. Like, like, this is a canon event. I yeah. can't... You can't interfere it. Yeah, kind yeah. of like moment so I, I see it probably being like that either like midpoint in the game or at the end of the game and he has to die in yeah. order for some wrong to be righted oh, for sure. um i don't think it's going to be like a i think it's gonna be a sacrificial death i don't think yeah. it's going to be like a shocking like i'm trying to think if there's been it's not going to be like if you side with the templars and then meredith kills bethany kind of like Right. Sudden, yeah. like thing. I think it's, it's got. It's going to be a sacrificial death yeah. because of who his character is. Yeah. And that's yeah. how very could want to go. Now, with Bianca not being there, I think confirms yeah. that he's. That's like how they locked him into not being a companion. I think that's how he's going to end up in a like advisory advisor kind of role. role. Yeah. yeah. He's got this like network, I guess, that he's built in the last ten years, and maybe that's his kind of role with the Veil Guard is yeah. like networking. Yeah. So I'm not sure. What Varric's gonna be up to if he's just gonna like hang out in the lighthouse? Yeah, because he, he didn't or, go there, but like maybe he'll, maybe he's gonna go there at some maybe point. Maybe he's going to go there because what we know from Game Informer is that like after that scene, I forget. Do you go to the lighthouse after the ritual, or you yeah, go you, you to wake Lara up. and then go to the lighthouse? You go. To, you you wake up and have a. You Sola speaks to you, and you wake up. You Nev and Harding go to the lighthouse, and then mm -hmm. you go meet Balara afterwards. Again, like there's not like a clear warrior other yeah. than Tosh yeah. in the past that I'm aware of, and then Lucanus, I think technically is like a rogue, really. A Dav rogue? Davrin, Davrin's your weapon and shield kind oh, of. Oh, that's right. Davrin's a warrior, so you have two warriors. Never mind. Okay, so we do have two. And and like Lucanus is a rogue, Harding is technically a rogue, and then all the rest of them are mages. Mages, yeah, and yeah. That and like if you as Rook are one class, then it's like okay, then to, like say if you play as a mage, then mm. it's like okay, do I never have a mage in my party? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think that's true. part of why they blurred those class yeah. lines. If, yeah, if you play as a mage, which is I feel like the most popular. A lot of class. people, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's so many like world repercussions for being a mage. As I was like yeah. trying to plan out like rooks and their factions and who they were gonna romance, of which there's one extra romance compared to the number of factions. So you have to do one faction twice if you want to romance everybody, mm. unless there's a secret. <laughs> uh, the no. executives. Uh, maybe that's the new game plus. Yeah. Uh, and then I kept being like, oh yeah, a mage would be cool here. A mage would be cool here. A mage would be cool here. And then I was like, I've not planned a single warrior. <laughs> the, honestly, the specializations, like we haven't mm. seen what the abilities are. The warrior ones, I will say, just the descriptions oh, aren't sure. as compelling. Yeah. So far, but I haven't seen what they what can they do. Are That's the thing, because I, I do like warriors. I've always played as a first warrior, but I did that yeah. very Inquisition, weapon and shield. In my in my opinion, it was just the weakest class. It was just tank. Mm -hmm. You're holding your shield. You are just holding it, uh, building up guard. It was fun to charge, really fun, yeah. but just weak. And then you're playing as like a mage, and you you know you're, you're fade stepping around, you're casting so many spells, you're stone fisting people. <laughs> 
I everyone loved Stone Fist it's so people. Good. It was, that animation was so rewarding. It's so uh, good. It's so good. And then Rogue is always fun. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love playing as an archer. That's always yeah. a good time. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, okay, I do need to do at least like one warrior play. <laughs> and I was struggling struggling to decide like who's gonna romance Tosh just because like Yeah, yeah. Trying to put together like different kinds of rooks and backgrounds. And also too, like the one of the, another limiting factor is like the factions are gonna get cool fashionable outfits. Yes! I wanna like look yeah. really good. And yeah. I, I'm like, okay, do I have my only Antiven Crow be a mage? Cause that would be a lovely ensemble. But it then like, how do you do that as your only Antiven Crow and not yeah. play as an Antiven Crow rogue? And yeah. Then, like, and it's it's like I it's just, it's just so many choices it's true uh, it's true so it's like i need to see all the outfit options honestly so I that's agree. again why i'm doing my like first playthrough yeah and this is my tip to everybody so yeah. everybody listen up for you right now <laughs> for your first playthrough if you're planning if you if you're like me and you're going to do multiple first playthrough have a save at the very beginning that you leave untouched like once you have your perfect rook all made up you've made no decisions yet in the story there's been no impact to the game. Have that save. Stow it away. Save that. Go about that whole first playthrough. Have fun. Do everything you want to do. Make the decisions on the fly. Like, don't look up anything up because you want to have those authentic, like, I made a bad choice moments because those just are oh. retrospectively fun. Uh, <laughs> like, go through it. Don't do any spoilers. But have that separate save at the very beginning. Because then when you beat the game, you're going to know the things of like, oh, I wish I did it this way. Or if I knew that I had to, if I could craft this, or I got this armor at this point, or this weapon here, it would have made a better playthrough. Then you go back to that, like, early game save, and you start all over and you do it the right way. You don't have to do it as your second playthrough, but just have that for later when we're waiting for DLC or an expansion or something because sometimes i i will go back to that first save delete the rest of it and like start over and do it the right way now that i know how the game is gonna go or sometimes i'm like okay i played as like myself now i'm gonna go play as like a bad person and make all the bad decisions and sometimes that's fun to do as a second playthrough and then go back to your like og rook for the third one do it do it however you want but that's my biggest piece of advice is just to have that early game save before you've made any impact to the game and your rook looks how you want them to do then like do that i'm glad we're getting the ability to change rook's appearance early i just yes. hope it's early when then in inquisition uh, yeah you had to play through Flipping the whole it. prologue there was a good like hour and a half of my yeah. nose looks awful <laughs> <laughs> i start out with these ideas of like oh this rook with this background and this class and this specialization would romance this person that would be a fun story but then when you actually go through the game it's true you might you yeah. might be like "Ooh, i really want to like play it this background because this happens at this point in the plot oh for sure uh, so i have like some preconceived notions but like before inquisition i had a whole chart <laughs> I had a whole like fully planned, like organized, like thing. And so this time I'm trying not to go that deep with it. Yeah. Some of that vision <laughs> didn't get to get realized. <laughs> and some of that vision changed a lot when I actually knew what happened in the yeah. game. <laughs> so now I have like a loose idea of like race, maybe yeah. what they're going to look like, yeah. maybe what class they're going to be, maybe what specialization they're going to be, maybe who they're going to romance. And For then sure. I'm trying. So like if some of those other than like the two or three that i've kind of brought up here some of those might not happen some yeah. of those might change yeah. very dramatically once i actually meet the characters yeah be the plot most importantly see what those outfits look like amen <laughs> absolutely absolutely like if, yeah <laughs> like for example my antiven crow like if the rogue outfit isn't just absolutely <laughs> bringing it to the runway compared to what the mage <laughs> crow outfit's gonna be yeah like just absolutely work the house down boots by the way it needs to for marketing show off the different outfits for each different faction give us the mage the rogue and the warrior of all the factions and show it to us beforehand so we can see so we, so we know can, this is again a part of your first playthrough it's is true. figuring out the looks for it's all your true. other characters yeah and i was trying to think too because i want to do a fire mage as a warden because that makes a oh, lot yeah. of sense but yeah. then I was thinking too, I was like, okay, but for like an Antiven Crow, if you think about it, after they assassinate someone, a fire mage could burn the body. Oh. And that would be 
very applicable to the world. For sure. About it, because like, <laughs> I'm I'm sure there's situations in which they want it known, like the crows assassinated this person. Yeah. But I'm sure there's other situations of like we don't want there to even be a body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or we don't want them to know like how they died. Or I can just see so many situations where like fire mages. <laughs> would be very heavily employed by both the Wardens and the Crows, oh, if you sure. think about it. Oh, even yeah. the Crows, maybe they might be a target that they want to uh, burn alive. Yeah, I'm trying to think other things too. What I'm most curious about is the Veil Jumpers. I found that to be a very interesting like whole faction to bring in, because I feel like it's a small group of people. Yeah, it's so, terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it seems like it's a Dalish people. camp that's grown into its own faction. Now they yeah. are they are not Dalish; they are Dalish and non-Dalish. But like when it was introduced in Twin Tonight, it was the Irulan clan that have then, <laughs> or the Morland clan, sorry, the, the Morland clan that have then become this faction. But they're now yeah. no longer just Dalish, or they kind of changed their. Because in the comics, there were some non-elves that were helping them out too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of like the Lords of Fortune of the Arlathan Forest. No? Yeah. It's, kind of, it's just like yeah. like Tomb Raider, Thetis edition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm very curious to learn more about the factions because that might change up how I'm doing too. And then I'm like, okay, but I want to play as like one of each of the races. Yeah. And but then I'm like, oh, but ooh, I don't know if this makes sense with this character. And then I'm just like, yeah, yeah. There's just so many different combinations and I want to oh, do all of them. But then after <laughs> like 12 playthroughs, it's not as fun anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's I have, true. I have. 13 inquisitors yeah one of the things that makes me most excited for this game is they heard the feedback about like you can have an open world but can we not make it just so open yeah yeah it's true yeah. it's true like can we can we progress along the plot yeah. and one of the biggest uh negative pieces of feedback about inquisition was the like it forced you into exploration because you had yeah. to get those points to be able yeah. to progress the plot yeah and it's like no, yeah, like yeah. I want to go do the mission and enjoy it me... in the moment. Yeah, don't make me go. Don't force me to do side quests. Have yeah. me excited to go do them. Absolutely, if I want to. So they they got rid of that because I think that was a huge mod for Inquisition. Was like yeah. no more point system. Yeah, go do the plot. Do what you want. But if you if you just do the plot, Inquisition is actually very short. Game. It is super short. <laughs> it's true. And that's why uh, I've done it's, that, but it's like we, yeah. nobody wants 1,000 hours of fetch quest content in a Dragon Age game. Yeah. Don't appeal to fans of Skyrim, fans of <laughs> RPGs at the time. Appeal to yeah. the Dragon Age fans who liked Origins, who liked 2. You know, that, yeah. that gameplay. side quests, for me personally, this doesn't always work out well for me because when you have big conclusion plots, some side quests get locked out. But for example, in Andromeda, I had the most fun with side quests after beating the game because then it kind of felt like a little bit of continuation of the story. Yeah, and with that, it kind of yeah. does work because you still do yeah. stuff in the and Nexus. And then you're like, okay, I'm waiting yeah. for like DLC, which unfortunately did not happen, but yeah. I'm like, wait for DLC. And so this is a nice way to like kind of continue the story. For sure. <laughs> you want to like get through it you want to like chase that down you do um and they came out the other day about like making sure it didn't feel like mass effect 3 where like the plot's so mission critical that it feels wrong to go do side quests yeah They're, they tried to figure out a balance of like the plot is crucial yeah bad stuff's happening we need to go fix this situation but it doesn't feel weird to go off and do like a little side quest if you yeah. want because yeah. i think we had this twitter exchange like yesterday or no it was with someone else on twitter and they were talking about that and i replied back i was like yeah the whole time i was playing mass effect 3 yeah. i was like no liara i cannot go do that right now <laughs> Whole planets of people are dying. You were literally there. We don't have time for this. It was like the entirety of Mass Effect 3. So it felt weird go doing like side yeah. quests. And I'll tell you that my favorite thing for Mass Effect 3, beyond yeah. if you take out the last two minutes of the ending, whatever, that's a whole yeah. other subject. Yeah. But yeah. everybody talks about how in Mass Effect 3, especially when the point where you get to where like the Cerberus attack on the Citadel, yeah, yeah. everybody's like, this is the best game I've played in my entire life. Oh, this yeah. Yeah, it's true. This is the best yeah. game I have ever. Ending is a different subject, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. my favorite things beyond just how good that plot is, is I loved the system of like every time you finished a quest or every time you finish the plot line, you'd get like some sort of like war asset. Yeah. I love that war asset system because it yeah. made me feel like I'm 
building you're progressing something. to something yeah because most of the time you're on the ship or you're on the ground yeah. doing doing something so it was nice to see the like off-screen aspect of these are the forces i've assembled yeah i don't yeah. see them but i have this like list and all the descriptions of how they were helping you and what they were doing for sure loved that yeah Would love that every bioware game yes absolutely um, especially in the veil guard see that again but if yeah. someone at bioware is listening and you yeah. have time <laughs> i don't think you have time anymore i think you're just polishing it up now but <laughs> for future games i'm just putting that out there i love yeah. that war asset yeah. uh system i'm very curious with this game and the veil guard because obviously we're building these relationships with these factions and a lot of the early messaging was like pulling the strings and the shadows and not being like a like a let's call it customer facing organization for sure like we're kind of in the background yeah. and all these other factions are more like customer facing for lack of a better term when it comes down to it obviously these factions are gonna and how we built relationships with them are gonna impact the ending i think that's pretty obvious yeah oh, um, yeah. So I'm curious like are there other like smaller alliances that we'll be able to make and for how sure. will those show up how big is the lighthouse? It seems like just like a little clubhouse yeah, kind of situation. Yeah, it's, it's got not a library. Like a, yeah, a yeah. base where our forces will assemble. For sure. I suppose just being hindsightful on, on on your you know since ten years since creating creating uh, Biofan and do, doing the Bioware mm -hmm. content, what have just been yeah. your major highlights of of just being on that journey? I would say the biggest thing for me was the highlights like getting to like preview the games was amazing the friendships i made with other creators was a huge highlight the friendships i made with the developers was a huge highlight i loved making the content especially like the trailer analysis videos were For super sure. fun because i'd go through and like find all these things and then come up with these theories about things yeah, yeah. and um it'd be interesting to go back and look at some of those and see like maybe what i found out that was yeah. interesting yeah. there were some times where i was like well, even the rook book that rook book from flipping 10 years ago and it was right in was, front of our faces it's like oh by the way that's yeah. my character <laughs> i know originally and this may no longer be relevant but i know back in like the dragon age origin days they mapped out five games yes with david gates notes uh, dedicated notes however what i also know about how that plan has changed is dragon age 2 didn't exist in that plan oh. dragon age 2 so originally it was going to go from origins to inquisition oh wow mm -hmm. it was going to go origins to inquisition i don't know how inquisition was originally supposed to look but i think we i think at the beginning of inquisition it's like the mages and templars have gone to war and we're like whoa so they were like okay dragon age 2 was kind of plugged in there from ea yeah and they're like okay what do we do between origins and inquisition okay the mage templar conflict would be like a really good thing to witness oh wow so again i don't know how inquisition was originally going to look and how they were going to yeah. handle that being yeah. off screen as For a sure. jump yeah but inquisition was originally planned as the second game wow. i don't know if veil guard is was, it was even on this original five game path because this is from like 20 years ago from yeah. a head writer no longer at the studio yeah um so i don't know if this plan has changed at all um i also know too like they can't even fathom doing a game that's no longer in the time period of the dragon age yeah, yeah. um ever what like when does this game start? It's in the 50s or 60s? Like 952, 954, something like that. Yeah, it's, we're halfway yeah. through. I guess if you think about it being like halfway through the Dragon Age, if this is still like the third game of the original plan, which who knows if the original plan is even still a plan. Yeah. I guess that could make sense if there's two more games planned. Yeah. After this one in very nothing has been done on it concept kind of way yeah though granted like i know when like when a game is fishing, finishing up so what writers are doing as things are getting polished is they're actually working on future content yeah so like right now in theory i don't know this for a fact but in theory if with like normal development stuff right now the writers would be working on like dlc yeah and having very early conceptual kind of meetings on the next game yeah a lot of what they're doing right now, those would be like less or so what they're doing. Yeah. Right now, what they're really, really doing is like playing the game, going through and helping with, and I didn't even know this was like part of their job, but they're helping with bugs actually, oh, but yeah. not the bugs you're thinking about, bugs in like text space or things right. that they've written of like, right. hey, can we change the, like when you have dialogue options, 
can we change the preview here yeah. to have this wording? Because it's a little it, like this is too close to what Rook actually says. So wow. we want to reword this so it's not quite as on the nose. Like those types of oh, wow. like debugging and tweaking. Yeah, yeah. Um, or like if there's some sort of like other bugs and things that aren't. I mean, I'm sure they're logging of like, hey, I played this and this happened. But yeah. they're going through and looking for writing tweaks. Yeah. Uh, like written tweaks or like if a sure. codex needs to change or if we need to add a codex. Yeah. Things like that, that obviously like they can't change anything that needs an audio recording for the base yeah. game. They might can if it's like mission critical. They do have deadlines for when they're writing the base game. They have deadlines for voiceover. Right. So I remember at one point forget who wrote Cora in Andromeda, but she was talking about like how I had to pull, she had to pull an all nighter to be able to get something in the game because the deadline for voiceover was oh, like going to happen. Yeah, so yeah. if she didn't finish something, then they wouldn't be able to record the voice part for it. And it would have been in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things like that. So they have those, those deadlines. Um, but yeah, the writers are all going through oh, and like yeah, yeah. helping debug and tweak the text portions of the game then in addition to that are like you know working on dlc if this game's gonna have dlc which i hope yeah, yeah. Uh, and i'm like people some there's some people that are of the mindset of like it should just be included with the game and i'm in the mindset of like i love finishing a game and then having something more about the game to look forward to me too me too yeah yeah. So I love being able to like look forward to DLC or get my character like all statted ready up, for it, all yeah, perfect outfit, yeah. ready to go into the DLC as a like fully finished character. Absolutely. Uh, and so I love being it. It's like it's a it's like when you read a book. Yeah. You don't need the second book to come out with the first book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like it gives yeah. you something to look forward to. Yeah, so let yeah. them do a really good book one. Yeah. And then once they finish the first book, they can go write the second yeah, one and it yeah. ties into the first, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how I kind of look at it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people said that with Trespasser too. And I was like, I loved Trespasser. They felt yeah. a little weary about doing a like conclusion DLC yeah. that you had to, that like this, like you couldn't go back to the game. Like this is the end, yeah. but it was so well received. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so I love DLC. So they're, I hope they are working yeah. on DLC for this. And Me too. Uh, I hope it's Stroud getting his moment. <laughs> I just wanted to okay. thank you so much, Eric, for, yeah. for joining me uh, and for talking about Dragon Age of Elgar, Taylor Swift, and everything else for this. Yeah. Just this fun episode. It's been so, just so once in a lifetime opportunity to really talk to you. Oh, so yeah. full circle. No, I massively been, appreciate it. <laughs> super, super fun. We'll need to do this again after we play the Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Yes. This will be yes. so fun after yes. we actually do the damn thing. <laughs> yes. We can talk about who who we fell in love with and who yes. broke our hearts. <laughs> Absolutely. Where can people find you if they want to get more yeah, of Eric? I I'm still on Twitter. Oh, yeah. I don't do. I mean, some of it is me like posting just like selfies and shit. But <laughs> I am on Twitter at Eric Ander ninety four. So Fantastic. E R I C A N D E R nine four. And sometimes I post about Dragon Age things. It's usually oh, yeah. me like responding to other people's tweets about like Dragon Age and Bioware things. If you want to follow me there, cool. I don't think I'll ever do like YouTube videos again, but you're welcome to follow me there online. That's where you can you can find me. Would you mm -hmm. join me in the privilege of saying I should go together at the same time? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, do we do a countdown? Yeah, 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 we'll do a countdown. So I've been Jackto. And I've been Biofan. We, I wish it should go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.